Do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Anchor is such an easy way to record and edit a podcast, and you can do it from either your phone or computer. Best part is you don't have to worry about getting it out there. Anchor distributes to many platforms, so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. You can start making money right away without having a minimum number of listeners, too. Anchor really is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. Hi, Hi. welcome Welcome to to the the Pier 54 54 podcast. I'm Amanda Kimmel. And I'm Shannon Coach, and we are your hosts. Hello, welcome to the April 11th episode of Pier 54. Today's Thursday, and that means we're going to do a general hospital history lesson. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into the history of the Baldwin family. So today, Amanda is going to tell us all about the Baldwin family from the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, and then I will cover the 90s through today. So Amanda, uh, what did you find out about the Baldwin family? I know I had a crazy time. Exactly. (laughs) I learned so many interesting things that I didn't know. Um, I thought a lot of today's characters were stemming from that time period, but the more that the characters developed, I saw that a lot of that family had all died off, and it's really just Scotty that's left along with um, his kids. So you can get into that side of it, though. It all began back in 1963 with Lee Baldwin um, joining the seventh floor as an addiction counselor. His brother, Tom Baldwin, made a brief appearance. He was on the show until 1976, and that is how we ended up with um, Steve Hardy adopting Tommy Jr. Tom Baldwin was married to Audrey Hardy, then realized that she was still in love with Steve, so he raped her. She got pregnant with Tommy, and then after she had Tommy... He left town and Steve ended up adopting um, Tommy Jr. I see that's crazy because I totally forgot that Audrey was raped because I was like, how did we not know this? And then I remembered that she told, with a, but she told Elizabeth. Yes. So, yes. And I love those part. throwbacks that they do yeah. because, again, 76, neither one of us were born. I would have not known that. No. So, um, I don't like how often rape has like played into their stories though and then they end up about that like there's an awful lot of rape in the yeah and luke and laura ending up together afterwards and all that i just i don't know why that was such a big storyline back then but i'm glad that we're moving past it we need to stick on the baldwins today but there was a whole thing in the 90s where luke told lucky the story of how he raped Laura true and basically apologized and said that was the absolute worst thing that I've done in my life um because it's a big deal because they didn't even go to a commercial break during it like they just did it straight so it was like the very special episode of the daytime drama so ah see yeah all these fun facts okay so um that takes us back to Lee who met Meg Bentley in 1965 when she showed up into town with her son, Scotty. Lee adopted Scotty, and then Meg died shortly after that, and then came in Carolyn Chandler, who he was married to or in a relationship with for about three years, and then she passed away. So poor Scotty has had a mom and a stepmom pass away in such a short amount of time. Well, who's his biological dad? You know what I saw that somewhere? I don't know. I will look that up whenever you're talking. Okay. back to that. Um, and then Lee ended up marrying Gail in 1977, and that is why Scotty thinks those are her, his, his parents, his um, real parents. Yeah. Um, there wasn't too much information about what Lee had done during the time he was an attorney. We knew that he represented some of the major characters, Edward and his ELQ scandals and things like that. Mm-hmm. In 1983, he ran for mayor against Luke and had Scotty be his campaign manager Mm -hmm. and Scotty was doing all kind of shady stuff like he was at that time period and was threatening Luke to stop running to be mayor or else he would expose the fact that Bobby was a prostitute and once Lee found out about that he did not appreciate those tactics so he fired Scotty as his campaign manager so Lee's a really good guy he is a good guy and then no Right. We have to win this fair and square, which I thought was nice. And that explains a lot, too. And again, I don't know how much you watched when, but they always talked about what a disappointment Scotty felt like to Lee. And I was like, I don't understand it. I mean, he did some shady stuff, but I never saw I've always thought that, that Scotty was such it. a sleaze, to be perfectly honest. I'm just <laughs> like, you're trying to break up Luke and Laura's wedding. You... Well, he's had a lot of women friends. We can definitely, yes. definitely agree on that. So... Once Lee found out that Scotty was essentially blackmailing Luke with the information about Bobby, 
then he fired him as his campaign manager and Luke ended up winning the election. But when Laura was then found out to be alive, Luke gave up his seat and let Lee take it over until 1985. And that is whenever Lee and Gail left to explore the world. That's pretty much the history of all that. And what then did it they gets... explore? <laughs> what was Scotty they... doing during after Lee fired him? Was he doing anything? Um, nothing that really comes to mind. That was whenever, you know, he was going to school and then having his multiple yeah. affairs that you're going to get into. I was going to say, because like, that's the thing is that, like, these characters go away for years yes and we never hear from them and then they come back and they're like oh hey which i will get into because it ruins things <laughs> so now we're in the 90s and i used general hospital fandom.com oh yes i used that thank you then there was also general hospital 2 fandom.com i'm not sure if they are affiliated or what but i'm gonna list them separately I was also on SoapCentral.com. I was on there also. And our favorite, Wikipedia. Yes. And a little YouTube, but I'm not going to play anything. I'm just going to tell you to go watch stuff on your own. So let's get started with the 90s because this is later when I really started watching. And I feel like I forgot most of my teen years from reading this. I'm <laughs> like, who's that? And then I had to look things up. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember her. So in 1993, Scotty married Dominic Stanton. They first got married because they were drunk in Vegas and woke up from a hangover. They did actually, when they came back to Port Charles, they did file for divorce, but they called off the divorce. They actually fell in love and stayed married because that's what happens. Then Dominique found out that she had a brain tumor, kind of changed perspective. She wanted to give Scotty a child. So they got Lucy to act as a surrogate. And it's actually really sad because Dominique passed away right after hearing the baby's heartbeat. Mm -hmm. You don't remember that? Oh my God. I wasn't <laughs> watching then. That was 1993. Oh, okay. 93, because yes. I was in middle school. Right. So you didn't get out. I didn't get out in time. Yes, and we didn't have, <laughs> you know, what we have now for technology to rewatch it. You know, my friend's mom didn't VHS it for us. She watched it live and related. That back. was it. Got yeah. It. So tell me about it. Do you remember it? Or was I just, it just horrible? I, I mean, just like, remember bits and pieces because in my opinion, even at that time, Lucy was already kind of trying to get with other people's men. And yeah. so when she offered well, Cause that to, was mentioned. Did, did she have a thing with Scott before Dominique or I thought they were just really good friends. Okay. They may have. Because there's a little bit that. of conflicting state statements somewhere, but I go with the majority rules right. on the stuff because I'm like, all right, if two out of three say this, I'm going with the two. Yes. Except yes. for what I'm going to get into next because <laughs> I just remember it seemed like although Lucy was friends with Scott, that maybe she wanted a little bit more, but I don't remember them having an actual relationship at that point. So yeah. when she offered to be the surrogate and they accepted, even at well, 93, I would have been 13. Even at that point, I was like, oh, this is trouble. I don't right. think we're going in a good direction. Right. But it, I liked Dominique. She was very nice. She was beautiful. Yeah. So it's sad that she had passed away. Well, because they mentioned that she comes back later as a, as a ghost yes. to Serena. Yes. And I'm like, I do remember that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I don't think I really, well, I, I don't remember her. So then just a year later, <laughs> we find out that back in those crazy college days, Scotty fathered a child. To his secretary, Rhonda, and the baby's name is now a high school graduate. Actually, that's probably appropriately timed. Mm -hmm. Wow, they did good. Karen Wexler, yes. who I know is one of your favorites. Oh, my awesome so, favorites. And, oh, I'm sorry, back to Serena being born. This is where I was talking about YouTube. There's a really, really cute video on YouTube showing Lee and Gail at the hospital mm -hmm. visiting her for the first time. And, I mean, they are just gushing over her. And Gail pulls out this little yellow sweater that she knit. And she's like, I told Dom that I was going to finish this. She wanted the baby to wear it home. Aww. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know this whole storyline. But at two minutes, I was just like, oh, I like you guys. That is like the blip that every website gave was they were just so happy to learn about their grandchild. Right. They were just so happy well, to learn about their grandchild. And that no matter was... where they were in the world. So I love that they portrayed them as doting grandparents. Yeah. Even from that moment. Because, so it says that, so here's the thing. After Serena was born, mm -hmm. GH Fandom says that Scott and Lucy fall in love and they adopt a baby girl, Christina. Mm -hmm. However, this was in Port Charles, not General Hospital. Right. 
So. You've never met Christina. There's a Christina. There's another Christina floating around out there Mm -hmm. with no storyline. This is why we don't do word spinoffs. She's out there. Well, they brought Serena back whenever Lee passed away. Mm -hmm. They had done Mm -hmm. that whole like memorial to him. Yeah, for like a minute. And Serena came home for that. Yeah. She's living in Paris with With her younger sister, Christina. Right. But Christina doesn't come home. Right. I didn't understand. I don't know. See, I don't remember her saying that. But then here's the other thing. Do you know that Serena also has another sister, Olivia Locke? That's like, once you say that, then my brain is like, yes, but I can't give you any storyline there. that's Livy from Port Charles, who is now Sam McCall. Oh. So I went down that rabbit hole. So we are sticking to GH, though, because... Yeah, we'll be lost forever if you go on this other show. We can't. But so that's the thing, is that at the same time that apparently Scott's finding out that he's Karen, that Karen's he, dad. Karen, <laughs> that he's Karen's dad. <laughs> Please don't be Karen. That would be a whole new. <laughs> he's also away with Lucy falling in love and adopting a baby girl. And there was one thing that I read and it just said, Serena and Christina have never come back from Paris. And I'm like, no. Except for you're right. Serena did come back for Lee and I totally forgot about that. It also mentioned that Lee and Gail were very accepting and welcoming of Karen. And then in 2003, she was killed by a car. However, on Port Charles, this was on Port Charles because then Gail had to talk Scotty into donating her blood to Lucy. Could not find out what the heck was wrong with Lucy, except for in my head, what I'm thinking, because I know Port Charles has vampires. Ah. Was there something wrong with Lucy's blood? That she needed good blood. But then, like, we don't talk about the fact that Lucy has Karen's blood now. Right, right. So, but we talk about BJ's heart yes. being in Maxie. But we don't talk about Karen's blood being in Lucy. So we really just... And so, that's another reason I don't like poor Charles. The spinoff there. Because Karen and Jagger were such an important part of the 90s yeah. storyline with Stone and Robin and all of that. That I personally really fell in love with those characters. So for them to push them off onto... Port Charles, and then have them come back in 2003 and be like, oh, yeah, she's dead. Like, yeah. Now, Jagger's Antonio Sabata Jr., mm, right? Yes. Because my aunt had a picture of him Ugh. hanging on her wall. And I remember I had his whole when calendar. I was younger, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, <laughs> like it, yes. was, it was like one of the first, I still remember the poster. You it know? was beautiful. <laughs> on Erica, he- if you're listening to this, I still remember your poster. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like the original leather coat, motorcycle, yes. like, It was definitely, it was like a black vest, I think. Uh, Oh, it was back when you could just, when the guys just wore a black vest with a tan and jeans. Right. Yes. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's what it looked like. But then also at the same timeline, it's saying that Scotty almost married Catherine Bell in 1993. Mm -hmm. So then that would have been before he found out that Karen was his daughter. But at the same time that he was married to Lucy, adopting Christina. In Port Charles. In Port Charles. He's also in the real Port Charles on General Hospital, almost marrying Catherine Bell, which I totally forgot about that Mm storyline because then Lucy broke them up because Catherine said that she was friends with Dominique. I remember that stuff. Okay. But barely. Like, that's the thing. But then if that happened in 1993, how do I remember that? But I don't remember Dominique. Maybe your friend's mom just really liked those characters and didn't care about that. Or maybe because Catherine Bell was so prevalent, like, later on when I was really, because, like, stuff on and everything right. like that and Mac mm-hmm. like I remember all of that so maybe I just maybe I'm mixing memories with that just scary but in the meantime while Scotty's off being married to three different people and having three different children at three different times because guys can do that girls can't right I mean it's one per customer yeah so Lee was staying busy in the boat um the courtroom he was defending Edward on the murder charges of Bradley Ward. Oh yes. Oh, and my gosh. yep. And the then, Ward family was amazing. We have to cover I them know, eventually. I know I miss justice. <laughs> We've got to I cover them. I loved him. Yes. We will cover the Ward family. And then Dr. Devlin, who was accused of the general hospital or the general homicide serial killings. And Julie is Dr. Devlin. Mm-hmm. And it turned out that she was being like brain controlled by another doctor. So we actually got guardianship of her. I feel like this is one of the last really good storylines that they got. Lee became her legal guardian and Gail helped her get committed to Ferncliffe to get the help that she needed. In the 90s, Gail also, re- so while Lee's in the courtroom, Gail's returning to work at General Hospital. 
She helped Monica through her breast cancer diagnosis. Oh, yeah. Um, and that was when Emily was being introduced. Yeah. Because Emily's mom had breast cancer. It sure is. Oh. So that was the 90s. And then Scott comes back because he left again. Right. We just it, don't know when. And he was looking for Serena, thinking that Lucy had kidnapped her, which she didn't. And it was like Dominique's half brother or something was coming for her estate. I don't know. I did not read <laughs> all of that because we are sticking to the Baldwins and their branches. And obviously there's diverts off it. But yes. the one thing that I wrote down was that in 2000, no, I was in, that was in 97. And then in 99, Lee had a pulmonary embolism. Mm -hmm. But that and, wasn't what killed him. No, no, no. He, he were, they, were yeah, they, yeah, but he was just like really worried about his family and everything. Um, 2001, Lee and Gail supported Scotty rekindling his relationship again with Laura. Mm -hmm. However, they called it off. 2003, Karen passed away when she was hit by the car. We already talked about that. Um, and 2004 was Lee and Gail's last episode. Do you know what it was? Oh, no. They attended Lila's funeral. Oh. That was their last episode. That's devastating. It's horrible. I mean, Lila. it's. I that, know. That makes that was sense. 15 again. years ago. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. I mean, it feels like, oh, yeah. I remember where I was when Edward passed away. I was getting ready for work and it was on like the morning news and I just started crying. I'm like, <laughs> no. So I get very emotional. I've noticed. Well, when you grow up with these people, they wind up, I mean, Edward and Lila were like our grandparents, yes. you know? It's, yes. And then I just said that Scotty comes in and out for a few years and we find out that yet again, I think it's in 2007, he comes back and we find out that he has another son. Oh no, sorry. This is the first son that we find out about Logan Hayes. Mm -hmm. um, and then he was eventually killed by Lulu, Lulu. in self-defense. Um, Cause then I also forgot about Cooper Barrett. Mm -hmm. And then I started going down that and I was like, oh, that's right. Yes. And... Franco, you're missing one child. No, wait, I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> We're only in 2007. I oh, still I'm have sorry. a few years. It's okay. Hold it. 2007. And then 2013, Scotty and Laura remarry, but they eventually divorce again in 2014. And then in 2013, we find out that Scotty is Franco's dad from a one night stand with Heber, Heather Weber. Which is just gross. It that lady is crazy all the time. I don't understand how anyone had any interactions well, with her. I believe that he was passed out yeah. drunk and Cookie, get down. Um, she did things. I see. And, oh, sorry. In 2007, he had been, he came back to Port Charles and said that he had been visiting Laura mm. while she was comatose. And then that's when the whole thing came out where he actually killed Rick Weber and then you know, Lulu was trying to tell her that to wake her up. And then he starts freaking out on Lulu and then Laura wakes up and now we're fine. And in 2008, he becomes DA. Apparently it's, I remember him losing it, but I forget if they didn't list when, because then it says that he regains it, I think in 2013. So I forget exactly what happened. And then Lee passed away in July, 2017 after actor Peter Hansen passed away on April 9th, 2017. So when this episode releases, it will have been a day after the two year oh, anniversary. Wow. And I did not know that. And they actually announced his um, passing in July. And then about a year later, we had Gail pass away and we just had her. Well, I mean, they've been Gail's passed away for quite some yes. time now, but we just had her um, reading, of the will. reading of the will during the episode. And then I just said that, and Franco marrying Liz brings the Baldwin Hardy family back full circle. There you go. So. From that nice jailhouse wedding. Yes. Are they going to do a real wedding? I don't I feel like know. those boys deserve a Something. real wedding. Yeah. I don't know. And that would be the opening to bring back Sarah. Yes, but I feel like her, that's gone. Because they kept talking about the fact that they were going to invite her. So I was like, ooh, Sarah's coming back. And then she didn't. So it's like. Maybe is the it pointless jailhouse to wedding do it is the end of it. Maybe it is. But that would make me sad. I feel like as much as Franco drives me crazy, that love story was still a good enough love story that it deserves a special yes. day. Yes. One that actually 
goes through. That yes. There's not a earthquake or a fire or whatever to stop it. So do we think that Liz and Franco are going to have any more kids? No. Or do you think that they will do what we have seen multiple times is adoption or fostering or because there is pretty much a whole lot of no blood in the Baldwin family right. tree. You know, technically Scotty is not a Baldwin. Right. Right. That's true. You know, right. But I don't know. Do you think Franco has some kids out there that we're going to Oh my learn God. About? I don't know. He has four children that are going to show up over the next 15 years. I totally forgot about Logan though. I did too. Cause did he was only too. on for a year. They were only on for a yes, year. Yes. I forgot about him. Um, until it said that Lulu killed him and I was like, oh, I do remember yep. that. I do. Yep. So, so, oh, was... we had said earlier who was, um, Scotty's real father. It was a man named Lloyd. Yes. So, okay. Just since we said, so we just a man named Lloyd. Back on that. A man named Lloyd. <laughs> One of the other websites I'm sure had a name somewhere, but it didn't develop him as a character. So I think it was just one of those. They had to have a name to say right. who it was. So well, there's a lot case, of those. Yes, in case anyone's wondering, it was Lloyd. <laughs> yeah, it, was Lloyd. it was Lloyd. It was Lloyd. We just put fault. that on a shirt. It was Lloyd. It was Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, what? Like Scotty's dad. Yeah, don't you know? It was Lloyd. And on the back, history. Scotty's dad. Exactly. <laughs> um <laughs> no, but so what was the most interesting thing that you think that you learned about the Baldwin family? Either through your research or hearing um, mine. Well, yours is like a rundown memory lane because I remember the different kids coming about and the different storylines. So that was just yeah. fun to hear about it, although I'm still mourning Karen's loss. I think the most like shocking thing to me was, again, I know they said that Lee and Lee and Gail, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just based on her name. They're like, hello. Lee and Gail were his adoptive parents, but I did not realize that they like, he had such a horrible childhood to end up yeah. with his two final parents oh and another thing I learned that I thought was really funny just because we keep hitting on the nurse's ball is the baby that he uh, that Scotty adopted with Lucy Christina that we've never met okay they um acquired her at the 1999 nurse's ball when <laughs> it, I don't know we would have to go back and Was see. she in one of the swag bags? That's say. what she went home. Right. I don't know. Was she sponsored by like... Yoko? O- 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 <laughs> What's the Greek yogurt? Oikos. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <laughs> don't throw the baby you. out with the oil. Right. <laughs> like... Oh, you can't make me laugh like that. I'm sick. I'm going to start calling. Um. No, so it said that her mother was a drug addict, or her mother was in Ferncliff, okay, and had convinced everyone that she, or like, was trying to tell everyone she was pregnant, but they just thought she was crazy, and they didn't believe that she was pregnant. They didn't notice her stomach? I guess not. So, then whenever she had the baby, she gave the baby to some drug addict and told her to raise the baby until she was mentally sound enough to get out of Ferncliff. Oh. And the drug addict mother said she couldn't handle this anymore and somehow had the baby at the nurse's ball and Lucy fell in love with the baby and then her and Scotty petitioned the courts and got custody of the baby and then adopted the baby and blah, blah, blah. How did she afford a ticket? I don't know. I don't know, but I just thought, like, again, we talk about the nurse's ball. This feels like something... Lucy got a baby at the nurse's ball. 1999. We're going to have to look that up. Yes. Lucy gets a baby at the nurse's ball. Yeah. So that to me was, I don't know if I'd say interesting, but just like, what (laughs) kind of thing. That is absolutely crazy. So So do you think we should do the Hardys next week? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was just thinking, I'm like, because they're really close to the Baldwin. So. Right. Well, we're not close. A few more people that are still alive that we can get into it. Because. Well, Audrey's still alive. She's just not. Right. Been on the show. Which, why didn't she come back for Gail? Yeah. When you talk to Miss Rachel Ames. Yeah. Write her a little note. Excuse me. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. She probably doesn't have email. The whole world has email. Now. I don't know. All right. So what was your favorite part? <laughs> Finding out that Lucy got a baby in the swag bag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that Wikipedia <laughs> said it like that. Um, I think I'm kind of like you just remembering how much I don't remember. Realizing how much I don't remember. And really learning more about Scotty's background because it kind of explains the way that he is a little bit, you know, that he he's had so much 
loss. I mean, he has one child in Paris that he never talks to, and he has two children, two children that have been feast, killed, right? And Serena, who, we don't know who's taking care of her. Well, she's she's like an adult now, now, but yeah. I mean, it's it's been some time since she's really had some parental guidance. So. Maybe she'll come back for the nurses' ball. Maybe. Well, her. she's in Paris. Maybe Lulu's visiting her. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe she's, she's a therapist. She can watch, and she's helping Lulu. She can watch Rocco while Lulu she goes and gets the therapy watch. that she needs. Maybe she and Christina are au pairs, and they they are au pair um, therapists, and they. Are gonna help Lulu. That would be a good twist. We should become writers. This we should. <laughs> General Hospital writers, you can reach us at peer 54 podcast at gmail.com. We are open for consultation. We are available for consultation. No, but I really think that that was, for the most part, all the storylines kind of wrapped up, except Every, for that hot mess of everything goes together except for 93 94. To do poor Charles. That's yes. where poor Charles, poor Charles comes in. Because part of that was the whole um, vampire blah, blah, blah stuff. Yeah. That, like that storyline, the Baldwin storyline did go into that with Lucy and him. And that you've got to see Christina on Port Charles. Right. Like she grew up for a couple years on Port Charles, but yet never made the crossover back to General Hospital. So. She'll be back. I bet she's in Dawn of Day. Maybe. Ooh. Oh my God. That would be so Oh my gosh. Because she's one of those like little. We really could just write those. Shows. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I found my calling. Yes. <laughs> All right. So next week we will talk about the Hardy family. And fun fact, I have a friend named Steve Hardy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we talked about that when I met him. I was like, like, like General Hospital. Did he say no? Like he had no idea he what He knew exactly about. what I was oh, talking no. about. He's like, no. It's <laughs> like now anytime you meet someone named Jake, you're like, Jake, Steve Farm. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> it's true. Don't name any future children, Jake. I'm not having any more children. Any grandchildren, Jake. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I know a Jake. That's what I'm trying to think. I'm like, I don't think I do. That's really sad. Then it's Jake from State Farm. Khakis. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's it. Hope you enjoyed the Baldwin family recap. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Mm, bye. <laughs>